Good evening and welcome to New Sources, yet another edition this week. The politics of numbers is full on. The shadowy characters, spies, are also on the news tonight. And the big political boys are on the ground. Yes, tonight we are staying matters politics, voter registration and the rising political temperatures in the country. Good evening. My name is James Smart. My name is Dennis Onsarigo. First, the highlights at this hour. Tunataka NYS watoke katika mambo ya siyasi. Wawache wa Kenya, wa Shindane, kakuna ile mbae iku wa stand. Malpractices such as double, double registration will be firmly dealt with according to the law. Raila, dawezambula, waziwazi, watoke njiane, njiane. Good evening. Tonight, the country is learning that the question of double registration is rampant. IBC now says over 128,000 voters share the same national identity card numbers. That is not conclusive. The list could be growing and will keep growing in the days to come. Court principals were first to raise their alarm, the alarm bells last week. Let's have a listening. The commission is working with, closely with the National Registration Bureau to clean up the, all the shared IDs. We, we, in addition, we have set up a team of registration officers and ICT uh, operators in our, in our commission who are conducting the further cleanup. The commission will also make available the provisional register to the members of the public for verification. The commission wishes to emphasize that malpractices such as double, registra double registration will be firmly dealt with according to the law. Okay, that's where we start off tonight. Of course, I'm joined by our very own James Smart. Welcome to the show. All right. Danish Odongo, welcome to the show. Thank you. Kama Kawaida, Fawmethuku, advocate, welcome to the show. And a long lost friend of mine, Geoffrey Mosoku, political writer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Geoffrey, to start off with you, where does this leave us as, as voters? Then is first, I will uh, start by appreciating that the new commission led by uh, Mr. Chepukati is um, 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 courageous enough to accept for the first time that there are anomalies in the register. Remember, this is not the first time opposition leaders have been claiming that figures are exaggerated in the uh, country's voters role. So by uh, coming out and saying, yes, we have detected that this is anomaly and we are ready to correct it, that is the way uh, to go so that this country can be able now to have a clean register. Remember, we are supposed to audit our photo register. But most important is that the old commissioners who just left the office two days ago have always denied. Every time allegations are made that there are issues with the register, they have denied. Remember, even during the last election, we went to the elections, including the Supreme Court case, even IPC could not tell the Kenyans which register they used. Mm -hmm. So this is the first step mm -hmm. towards cleaning. Uh, that register. But it's most unfortunate that the system we used last time was an IT system, which was PVR, where you take your parametrics and your ID number. So there is no way mm -hmm. that somebody could have said there was double registration, mm -hmm. double entry. It means somebody did it deliberately. Danish, is this a sign of how massive maybe the rigging was in 2013? Um, not really. I, I think I want to agree with Musoku that uh, for the first time uh, the Commission is agreeing that indeed the register might have had a few issues here and there in terms of double registration. And I think it's human to error, but admitting it means that you're moving toward the right direction of trying to correct um, you know, the register. And I think that's a very good step towards mm -hmm. building faith in the IBC that has been thrown in. If we start to tie it down and say massive rigging at this tender stage, then we might actually be leading the nation well, patriotic I path. mean, he's saying human to error. 128,000 voters sharing the same national identity card number. I mean, your national identity card number is like your PIN number. Yes, sure. So we have so, duplicates out there. Um, I, I don't think I have a problem with the way things are this far. Six months before the election, the voter register should be cleaned up. That's what the law says. Within, actually, not later than six months. Six months start in February, okay? So that's by Feb starting February, uh, the IBC should be in a process of cleaning up the register. Now, the cleaning up, cleaning up entails getting the 
the, the statistics of the of Kenyans who have ID cards eh? and comparing that with the register that you have. Now, the problem is not of the number of double registrations in the IABC register. The problem would be any double registration of, okay, double IDs. If you are to tell me that in Kenya there are two people or three who have same IDs, even without the elections. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That would now be a disaster. Yeah. Because these two people are capable of now getting into the voter register. Okay? But the, the issue we should be addressing is at the end of the whole of this game, by August, by August, will we be having a register that is credible, that everyone can see, and it will be shared. Everybody can see that what we have now is actually the number of registered mm -hmm. voters mm -hmm. in Kenya. As long as we have that, then the process... So, are we likely register. to have that register that everyone will say, I belong, I have a right <coughs> to vote? I, I think the, the, the good thing is IBC, these new commissioners are getting into office and they're starting to win the confidence by saying the first thing we, we've got into office and we've looked at the numbers, we've looked at the issues, and these are the issues, and they're being open about it. I think that's a very good approach uh, because they need to win our confidence and they have such a short period of time for us to, to decide that we trust them and we don't trust the politicians because until then, until last week, the different political classes really were the IBC. They were deciding how they were going to conduct this election. Jubilee decide they want the manual code, decide we are going to register people as we want and that sort of thing. So I think this is a very good thing. Whether we'll have a good process moving forward, I think it will be in, in, it's incumbent upon these men and women at the IBC to start sharing a process that gives us confidence. Because at the end of the day, we're dealing about it's a question of trust. It's not a question of technicality so much. It's a question of trust that mm -hmm. someone really who's seated as a referee has the best interest of both sides at mm hand. -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think what is going to happen is that if we discover more discrepancies in the voter register, then it's going to throw away the, ex the entire results of the 2013 elections. Because then there's no way a commission that has just been removed from office, we are now unearthing major discrepancies. And then they kept on saying the way they delivered a credible election. I think for us, it is indeed an indictment to their own incompetence as a commission and by extension to the entire IABC that held the 2013 elections. Uh, Dennis, this commission must restore the faith back to Kenya. Uh -huh. Dennis, if you remember, uh, the court coalition has been always claiming that about two million people voted for the president alone. They just came to a polling center, voted for the president and left. That figure is disputed, but IPC in its own words has said, yes, we have about half a million people who just voted for the president. So these are the issues that now I, the new commission has to address so that as we go forward, the register will use. Even Dennis, uh, myself, Waome, Odongo here can be able to access it and say, look, this is the number of people, because the register is not a property of IBC. IBC yeah. is just a custodian. So by the time we go to election, all players must be able to know <coughs> which register they are using and right. which numbers. Okay, let's stay with it. And while at it, the Interior Cabinet Secretary, Joseph Kayseri, dismissed Code Corp Principal Kalonzo Musioka's concern that his national identity card was used to register someone in Garissa. The IBC has since confirmed it is handling several cases of individuals sharing national identity card numbers. Well, that is, uh, we've been on this, you know, for a while, but <coughs> I think this is where, again, the political class, and, and especially I think the Interior Cabinet Secretary and the government has to take a step back and let IBC be IBC. Mm -hmm. we, we need uh, someone, a referee at the middle who does not look like government. I think the statement from the CS was uncalled for to, to start with because um, it should have uh, thrown the ball into the IBC's court and and let IBC come out with this kind of explanation that, like they had today. So I think it was off mark and um, it, it's marks of um, a government that is um, not tolerant to... to let, yeah, let, why do you think it was important for the Interior Minister to jump in and say, well, this is, you know, it's not true? Yeah, uh, you, see, not IBC. You, see, you see, as a government, the first thing you do is to deny. You don't just accept. You see, the first thing you do is deny if the truth comes out and uh, it's proven that what was being said was true, then you can have an explanation for that. Deny. But, 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 uh, <laughs> but what, what the point of, wait, let, me, let me make this point. The, the issue here is that this uh, ministry is in charge of the registered, of the, of, of, uh, the population, okay? Registration of the, the, the country's population. Now, we have an IBC that is in charge of the registered voters. Now, those two records must be harmonized. 
Okay? And that's why uh, when it comes to cleaning up of this register, the law requires that IBC may contract another organization, an external body, to come and do the auditing. So that at the end of the day, it is neither the IBC nor the government per se that picks out where the double registration is and cleans up this register. Yeah. That's the only way that Kenyans will have we some have confidence in this. It does address why still the, this ministry mm -hmm. felt that it's incumbent upon them to dismiss in total the, Kalonzo uh, Musioka, uh, the, does it? The, the problem we have is that um, most government officers, be it ministers and, 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 and uh, spokesmen, those for different uh, political uh, leaders within the government, the uh, ruling elite, and the politicians from uh, the president's office, the deputy president's office, the leader of majority in both the Senate and National Assembly, every time an opposition leader makes an allegation, they don't even uh, uh, bother to cross-check. All they do is to rush and issue a denial. And so it, it has left embarrassing. And I'll tell you, James, yeah. uh, um, there's, a, uh, there's a police officer who was sharing me some information the other day. They were investigating a case of somebody who erroneously sent an Mpesa, and this guy put off his phone and disappeared. So they went to the National Registration Bureau, and they got uh, a printout of the IDs. They found that this guy, had the same ID number as two people, one is in Irumura, another is in Injoro. So when they tried to get these guys, is that they found that the Irumura guy even acknowledged that I know I share a number with somebody, meaning that this is a fraudster who had registered an ID number using somebody's number, in fact, but with his name. Fuck smart. What that means? I mean, I, I, maybe I have someone out there who has the same ID number. Precisely. That I have. Yeah. Yeah. And those are fraudsters. Why? Holding up what Wahome was saying, I think the government work is not to lie to Kenyans, then yes. eventually come and clarify <laughs> facts. Then that's a very incompetent government in the first place. I think the issue of the government is to stick to the truth. And when they speak, they don't contradict themselves because it is very bad. PR-wise, and of course in terms of the confidence that the government has of its people, when it lies or dismisses things on claims, then eventually it is found out to be the truth. The government looks bad. Like the 10,000 kilometers of road they have tarmacked. When those found out that this thing was actually a lie, you know, they look terribly bad. So, certainly, but yeah. Smart, let me say this. Eh? We may debate the whole day about whether we have two or three Kenyans with the same ID cards. That is not the issue when we are discussing elections, because... The, 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 the elections, what we need to have is a register where we don't have two ID cards being held by two different voters. That is, as long as that we can do that with the election, then the rest of the registration of persons in the country as to who has which card, that can come later. For now, we are more concerned about the voters' uh, register we have. Let us ensure it's clean. And, and we have a very short time for that. Six months from February thereabout, we must be having a record. That is and, and just to add that shortly, <coughs> now that we are confirming that there, was a, there were issues in the register, the new commission, what they should move uh, with speed, is they have to reshuffle the secretariat because the people who are in charge are not the commissioners per se. They are directors of voter registration. There's a manager of voter registration. The same, same people sitting in the same office. These are part of the mess. So even if they don't uh, sack them, they need to reshuffle them so that you have somebody fresh who will not play the same, same so, uh, mischievous let, let, let me throw this in the panel. Does anyone believe that this new commission has strength, the political will, you know, to take matters into their own hands no. as opposed to the secretary? Because the no. secretary has been running this thing for a year or so. Does anyone believe that these new commissioners will come in have, you know, uh, what it takes in, to, in to my own run? Think, in, in my own thinking, eh, even if these uh, commissioners were there for about two more years, I mean, previous two years. Commissioners per se are like um, ceremonial. ceremonial guys whose work is, they are not the hands-on people. Okay, we, we see their faces as the face of the commission, but the actual work of the commission of cleaning up these things and putting what where mm. is the work of the secretariat. That's Let's good. go. The government has dismissed claims by code leader Raila Odinga that the spy agency, the National Intelligence Service, is secretly registering voters across the country and Across the borders, Raila claims BVR kids have been sneaked out of the country for the registration. State House says the opposition has sensed defeat, that there is nothing like that. Take a listen. Ile shirika yojasusi, shirika yojasusi, ambaye na lipo pesa na serikali, pesa yaraia. Ndiyo inatumika kila mara kuiba kura. Mara hile ngine, wao ndiyo walituma maofisa yao. Sa hile ambaye IBC inasajili wale makarani, maklaks ya kusumamia uchaguzi. Na presiding officers, na returning officers, 
Shirika ya Jesusi inaingilia pale mbandani na anaweka watu yao. So these are grave grave allegations coming from uh, Rail Odinga. Uh, placed or misplaced? Again, this is the thing about you know, Rail Odinga. You when he gives these statements, like when he started with the NYS, you have to give it some, you know, you have to put him in a wind scale. Sometimes they look really off, but then after a period of time, <coughs> he has this knack that just gets getting provided. But on this question of NIS, I think it's without a doubt, if we look at the 2013 elections, has a lot of prints about what the NIS would be doing. You know, it has the hallmarks of the NIS. Yeah, and I, I think we, let, let us look at the credibility of one Raila Amolo Odinga. We might disagree with him in many areas. But one of the facts that we must uphold and actually agree with is the fact, is the fact that he's never, most of the time when he blows a whistle, definitely there's usually the truth in that. And I think. The government should not just dismiss the allegations that Raila has raised. I think it is their work for them to be able to restore the faith in Kenya because we do not want to go to an election period where we believe that the, the scales have been tilted to favor the, the ruling regime. I think it is the work of the government to actually restore both, I mean, the work of the IBC to restore both players' mm -hmm. faith that this process is going to be very, very secure. But if you have a national intelligence service agency being partisan in an election, then I can tell you very true, my brother were home and everyone else in this panel, I'm willing to go to mass because then there's no hope for this country. Let me, let me, add, let me add this and say, I agree with him when he says that uh, Hannah Brida is a, is a guy whom once he says something, and you can even read from his body language, when you can tell when Raira is serious about something, and, something. and when, he is, uh, when he is playing games about it. But having said that, any involvement of, of uh, NIS in, uh, in electoral processes. It's not by accident. So you can't say that the government must do something or, inv or not deny or in investigate. Eh? If there is such involvement, you must be very sure that it is the government handling it. And the, the government does not play much in, in these things. You, you either use such an agency or you know, some other political outfits. Okay. <laughs> so when, when, if it's true what uh, he is saying that there's such kind of an involvement, then don't, don't think that it's something that the government can come and investigate solve. And, and solve and say that uh, we have now investigated. Is Israel Odinga taking his case to the public? I think that's, is that I what think that's exactly what Raira is doing, knowing the nature of the operations of the uh, spies. These are not people who are like uh, KDF or Kenya police or uh, administration police who have numbers that you can identify and say it's so and so is corporal so and so or inspector so and so. These are people who are supposed to shadow. Shadow. Yeah. So how do you know even if even even when you sit there, how do you know that one of us is not one of them? So the issue is maybe Raila knows. No, the only thing he, I can yes. do, <laughs> I'm just giving an example. The only thing Raila can do is now to go to the public and say, look, somebody is trying to. But how does mistake. that help? Yeah. How does that help? Uh, I think it's preemptive. It's just trying to, if this end scheme is trying to preempt, uh, but at the same time... Can it, can it stop the NIS, what I'm trying to get with, can it stop the NIS from can. doing what they're doing? Yeah. Yes, if they're doing, from, from, yes, if they're doing I, I want to believe from we can. From doing what? From doing what exactly? Well, well, whatever is, is claiming... Is he saying that they're registering people? Yes, 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 he's saying that they're registering people, yes. He, he can stop that, okay? Yes. Once you have blown it up, then it can stop. But you have to understand that from the, even the elections, it's, it's, a, govern, it's a governance process, okay? So that you can't just remove the government entirely from it. They have to keep watch. They have to know who is doing what, even with the with the, our electoral process. They, this is a government. A government is in place. It's their duty to keep watch. But if you are saying that they, they, are, they are registering people out there, then that's something that can stop from what. But, you know, you know the issue is you know, this, this, this this NIS story is um, forming the basis of our opinion question tonight, and we're asking you: Do you think the National Intelligence Service is interfering? with the ongoing voter registration. Do you think the National Intelligence Service is interfering with the ongoing voter registration? You can tweet me at Dion Sarigo, at James Smart, at KTN Kenya, at KTN News, hashtag news sources. Smart, let's continue having this discussion. Absolutely. Let's move on. And we want to stay with the elections. And IBC has released figures for the newly registered voters. Close to 800,000 new voters have been enlisted, falling short of the 1.4 million weekly target. That's showing there is still more work to be done, but political pundits have made quick calculations that show Jubilee zones are apparently leading in registration of new voters beating code zones. Take a listen. The total number of applicants for the last seven days stands at 825,145, which translates to 58% of 
of our weekly target of 1.4 million. All right, weekly target to that 1.4 million. We're back to these numbers things. Now, every time IBC is going to release this number in the next three weeks, we are going to separate it you know, into columns and say, this is Jubilee Zone, and they're doing 90,000 voters. Code is doing 82,000 voters, something like that. Where does this leave us, Dongo? Um, I, I think, for me, it's actually getting exerted a bit early. Kenyans have a tendency to register you know, last minute. So I think it is very, very early for us to beat the drums of celebration and say one region is winning or one party is winning or one party is losing. But we need to focus on sensitizing Kenyans to go out and take the to take the voters card. Those who are not who are not yet who haven't yet registered. This idea of celebrating early is is what happened in two thousand and seven when a party celebrated too early when then the Tarakani the votes are not yet coming <laughs> I think let us not be excited too early. I'm right. sure everything will end up I mean will be sorted out at the numbers. After the registration process, whoever will be having what numbers, that is where the game will start. It's too sad that uh, so far people have not picked up the registration. We are, people are still talking about voter apathy. I don't know whether it is voter apathy or it is registration apathy. You know, those are two different things. Politicians are saying pick up the votes, pick up the, I mean, the votes, but uh, wait and decide whether you'll vote. That is that. But as regards uh, this registration, it's too sad that we, the, the, the ABC is not reaching their target. But hopefully, as he says, towards the end of, uh, close to end of the, the month and starting February, more and more people will be coming out. But what I know is that after that, after the registration, that's when now you will sort out and say, this is how the figures stand. And this is how we are like So, so what's, what's the point of going to, to vote, really, and, and being convinced about anything if, like, what Ohoma is picking up and saying, after we're done, we're going to say, Jubilee has so many million votes, Code has so many million votes. What's the point of being convinced I mean, the about politics? The assumption you are making here is that uh, a certain region is, is patented for someone. That's the assumption you're making. And I'm telling you... That's a fact. It's, it's not offered. In, it, that's not a fact. I'll give you an example. Let me give Rift Valley. Whenever people do calculations, they assume that Rift Valley all the three million plus votes belong to one part, to one uh, side. But if you look at 2013 election, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta had 2.1 million, Ray Rodinga had 700,000. So that is how they shared. So if you are going to make an assumption that uh, in, 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 say, in Eastern, um, court coalition is commanding 60% of that, you'll be making a, a wrong assumption. What do you need to do now? And which IBC is, I should say IBC is lucky because it has gotten what you call ambassadors. All the political parties, like you call them introduction, the big boys are in town asking everybody to register. What we see is that as the weeks go, we will see numbers. People will be tricking in. Like you saw, uh, if for instance, look at Coast. The lead of the opposition was supposed to be in Western this week. But because the statistics coming from that side were not promising. He had to change his uh, itinerary and move there. So you will be seeing, you even saw the president released his first itinerary. He was basically holding Mount Kenya in, in Meru and, 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 and the central areas. But he had to move now. He was, he's been in Marisabit, he's been in Isiolo, he's been in Garissa. So you are going to see across the country all these political leaders. And I want to believe that the numbers will soar as, as, as the days move. But, but I think <coughs> it would be selfish of us to expect Kenyans to enthusiastically go and register to vote while their colleagues and their friends are dying of hunger. I think it is also very optimistic of us to expect Kenyans to line up in large numbers to vote while we have got unresolved corruption, menace in this country. It is extremely optimistic of us to hope that Kenyans would actually go out and vote while the drought is hitting this country hard. We are flipping the issues in this country and we are changing them very fast. And I think that is extremely tragic that our leadership is now playing with our the lives of our people. I mean, I mean, the doctors are still on strike. Uh, the doctors are still on strike. I don't, I don't think there anything so changes in this country. country. The least we want to hear is the issue of go and vote. I mean, I mean, all, by all means, there's it is good for us to go There's a difference between vote. voting and registration. People are being told register now. Whether you vote or not uh, is another issue. But I want to pick what Musok was just said that uh, you can't divide these zones into some political groupings. Can you? Uh, you, 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 you? We are not holding the elections after February. It means that from there up to August, you'll be playing with those, those numbers. If you want to win Bungoma County, for example, you know the numbers that are there. Those are the numbers you go for. If you think that there are no numbers in a certain county, you may as well ignore it. So that at the, by August, we will all be knowing 
that these people have worn these Dennis, hats of these people. And do, these do, you, do you believe that honestly, after we are finished with August, we know with February, what Home is presenting, that it's an open plate, then yes. Uru Kenyatta, William Ruto, Raila Odinga, we are going to go to County A and ask for votes. It's and a lie. starting from as you know. I think, I think they will um, one sit pretty and wait for the elections because one side will say we have the numbers now. But I don't think this election will be won by the end of this voter registration exercise. I don't, I don't think so. Many issues are going to come up. There are people who are not going to vote. There are people going to vote because they are protesting against the government. There are people who are not going to vote because they feel nothing is likely to change. Mm. So it's a catch-22 situation for many voters out there. And the candidates who is going to run on court, for, 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 for instance, things are likely to change as we go forward. But we did ask you tonight, do you think, do you believe the National Intelligence Service is interfering with the ongoing voter registration exercise? Do you believe the National Intelligence Service is interfering with the ongoing voter registration exercise? Tweet me at Dion Sarigo, at KTN News, at KTN Kenya, and at Gemsmart. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back.